Hey everyone, Tim Miggins here. So I'm going to do another video on an awesome product by Broadcom called Agile Designer. Now Agile Designer, we'll, we'll talk about a couple scopes, right? So we'll talk about what it is, we'll kind of give a layout of the UI, we'll build a simpler one, then we'll look at some complex uh, scenarios. Now, to get started, why would you use Agile Designer? If Agile Designer really is a tool to help you build your test cases, or at least um, it, it helps you do more than just that, but if you think of that as a sim simple level, then you'd be able to move through it pretty quickly. But you want to think of it as a way of building out your requirements, your test cases. Um, you can even build user stories. There's a lot that you can do with this, but we're going to focus mainly on the concept of building test cases. Now, what's saying that if you think about most companies, whenever they do requirements, they are very, I wouldn't say vague, but a lot of times they don't get a lot of detail. For an example, um, probably last week I was asked by one of our uh, developers team leads or somebody like that to help build some scripts now this was all the script said user signs in and this is one of our other products and they add one app okay see very vague and most of the times that is now I know exactly what they're talking about but let's say you're in a huge corporation and it comes down and says hey we need to test a login well from a developer they have a mindset of what that means. Well, a PM has a mindset of what that means, and the tester has a mindset of what that means. And even though in a simple thing you're thinking, okay, I'm just going to click to log in, well, that's not always the case. There's a lot more to it than just that, especially from a developer and a, tech, uh, a tester's point of view. So what we're going to do is if you look at Agile Designer, if I go to a tester and say, okay, you need to start testing the ability for a user to log in. So what does that really mean? So how do they how do they measure that? How do they know that they're on the right path? Well, this tool will help them with doing all that. So we're going to walk through it. Um, as the UI goes, we'll obviously show it as we walk through it. Um, it'd be kind of boring for me to sit here and just show you the UI without doing anything with it. So what we're going to do, we're going to just start a new one. We'll call it login. Okay. I'm going to skip the rest of this, these uh, little wizard screen here because you'll see it as we go now this always starts off if you ever use the tool called Visio, then this would be a very familiar ui for you okay and if not the concept of a, a flow chart or a process chart whatever you want to call it this is what you're pretty much building out so this really puts the end user to be anybody to build this the pm could build it um the the developer could build it and the test can the test manager or the test leader whoever can build it as well. Now, that's always been a debate of who's in charge of testing and who's in charge of the requirements for testing. The truth is everybody is, right? Um, now, again, businesses can change depending on the business use, but at the end of the day, everybody should be in charge of it because a PM needs to know what, you know, what measurement of resources they're measuring. The developer needs to know, well, did we hit all scenarios to make sure that my code is correct? And the tester needs to make sure, well, did I test every area? So. With Agile Designer, you can easily build that out and share it between everyone. So what we're going to do, we're going to start with, now these are process blocks. Let me cancel this and show you. The idea is you always have a start and end, okay? Start and end right here. So if you start with a new, it's there. If I delete them, I can bring them over. Uh, your process block, we'll talk about that multi uh, very in detail. And then you have a true or false, pretty common sense, right? A logical block. And then you have a multi-output case. Um, that would be like a multiple ifs, um, multiple trues or false, that ton of stuff. We'll talk about that. A decision table. You can create a decision table where there's multiple decisions. Do I want a banana split? Do I want a, I don't know why I said ice cream because I'm <laughs> big on ice cream, so it's hard to name all of them. Do I want a blue car, a red car, a yellow car, a Ferrari, a Mercedes, or, you know, a Pinto? And then you have what's called a subflow. A subflow would be many flows into one flow. And hopefully we can see all this. And text is pretty common sense. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead. Well, you know what? We don't want a process block. We want it if a true or false. So again, it goes back to my requirements of login. OK. Oh, we'll go back. I'm clicking too fast. So here I have my name. I can put in a note if I want, and my outputs are true or false. Okay, now you can change those, and you can also use a multi-case tier as well. But we'll click here. So we're going to stick with the basic. This is code action, but this 
these set of settings is what I would call them. Uh, it says common, but here's where you would do most of your picking, right? So what type of block is this? Is it an error block? And you'll see that in a few minutes. This is a data block. Um, am I interacting with data? And we'll get to that shortly. Um, and then of course, how critical, I've never used these two, but I see why they're imported if you wanted to, okay? So now we'll go into say attribute. I'm gonna, remember I told you earlier, you can change this. So I would leave it as is, unless you want yes or no. It doesn't matter, or anything really. Uh, purple, pink, doesn't matter. And then users. Now we don't have users, but this would be people in roles if you wanted to assign that. An admin or a test user, um, the programmer makes a decision here, right? Um, and then this is just following tracking details. We'll get to more on this later. Whenever we get into, um, I'm gonna try to do a video on building custom code, and we'll talk about that when we get to that. So let's go ahead and finish. So now the first thing I'm gonna say is, we're gonna always focus on the happy path first, okay? So valid email. The next thing we wanna say is, is user and system okay and I'm not going to jump to all those other screens because you saw this if I just hit finish it goes with the default okay uh, the good thing about this is to give yourself a real estate now you have your zoom in down here right um, I don't know if you guys hopefully you guys can see this because it's very big for me but then I go from here to here with our happy path So as soon as I draw the line down, when you get this output window, it says which path you want to take. So in this case, we want to say true, because remember we're building the happy path here. Um, now we want to make sure that the user is in the system. Okay, um, I feel like there should be another one. You know what, that one shouldn't be in the system. We'll click on this one and we'll say valid password. <clears throat> well, yeah, I'm just trying to think. So. When I, whenever I go to log in, there should be more than just one step, right? You gotta make sure the email is correct because we, that's fine, valid password. Um, now we'll talk about this window in a few minutes because you get a lot of information. Not so much, the ones that are kind of darkened out um, don't really have data. The ones that are have the dark, the, I'm sorry, the ones that are, to me I call it grayed out, but if you can see it, it's kind of like a brown color. They don't have data in them. The ones that are the black, they are in your properties whenever you right click okay these other ones we can add for an example if i need to add a variable here i could easily do that but we'll get to that shortly because i'd rather that be in a process so valid email format technically it should be a valid password before we do a valid so let's do this uh, valid email Again, we'll just do the finish. Delete that one. We're going to make a happy path to say, okay, so the email logged in. So that was good. And now we're going to verify against the password. Okay. We'll put it up here because we can line it back down. That's good. And this is supposed to be a simple video, so we're not going to go much complicated. Okay. So then true. So right now would be a good time to talk about some of the UI. Now that we have a simple happy path flow. So we start, we validate email format. In other words, does it have the at symbol? Does it have a .com or whatever? Um, then we validate the email with the system. The email's good. Then we validate the password. Password's good. Now the user can get in, okay? So let's go ahead and talk about some of this UI. If you look up through here, we have a save. We'll get to that a few minutes. There's a snap to grid. That's really useful if you have a lot of these uh, nodes. And then you have a color change where I can go and change the color of some of these, uh, restart, restore the default color. And you'll see in a few minutes that that's kind of important because Agile Designer gives you a set of default colors that I recommend kind of staying with. Um, you can also change your arrows, your fonts. We'll talk about these two in a few minutes and we'll get into these in a few minutes. But if I go look at my design, uh, design I can do a lot of these edits as well. Now I have them all selected, but if I select just one, then I can go in there and make some different changes. Um, some of these, let's see if we can select them all again, notice it changes some things. Now, again, most of this is pretty common sense. <clears throat> um, you didn't see that it popped up on the other screen. So let me drag it over. So I can change the layout if I wanted to, um, make it 
there's a horizontal light and it, that's one of the things I was looking for notice my oh that's why I didn't line up right because I got my little node coming off the side she came off the bottom I apologize about that but you get it right so if I want to move it to vertical I can do that I can change it to you know a compact tree um, I guess that'd be five I've had layers uh, we'll change them all oh well <laughs> you get it right so most of these you can go back to relay which is what I just did and adjust the connectors so most of this is pretty common sense like so if you ever used a product like uh, Vizio then it's laid out a lot like it now some of the things I like is if I'm doing a couple a couple things like picking this one this one and this one then I can clone those and I'll have to recreate them I can duplicate them um, it, and the good thing too we'll talk about this one thing that agile designer does very well is if I'm in uploading some scripts from somewhere else um, and hopefully I can do that in another video it's kind of what I'm playing with the process now that with doing that agile designer will automatically look for duplicates within your path okay now again this is this whole diagram is called a model okay in your model you'd have many different paths and you're gonna see that within each path is considered a test case or a user story or whatever again you're gonna see that in a few minutes so I'm trying not to go too far explaining because a visual works better than just explaining and right now I want to fix this node that I have down here apologize I think my mouse is slowly going out on me so we use the mouse and the keyboard let's go ahead and delete that one and that's gonna break our chain I'm gonna pick this one and now it's got this hand because I told it to use the hand let's hit there we go whoops uh, I got to get this one and what you want to do is get right on the tip and just drag it down right I mean part of this pretty common sense it says which path we're doing happy path right now okay so this is pretty much our happy path I don't know if it straightened out that line but we'll see there was a way to right click and do this and there we go and that's what I was trying to find a few minutes ago and I couldn't find it but it is what it is so let's get back to our, our flow all right, so looking back at our flow, we got our start, we got to validate email. So going down the chain, the next thing we need is the unhappy path. So with this, we'll say email not valid. Okay. And now this is where it's important. This is actually an error. Okay. Again, with all these settings, like I said, you'll see them as we go through them. With these settings, uh, infrastructure, user uh, interaction, there's kind of like tagging them. The code action is a very important one and the data. And of course, whenever you do in testing, error and assertion. Now, you'll see where these are really handy at when we get to the actual end of this. So let me go ahead and say finish. And what we're gonna do, what I'm going to do, is paste a couple of these on here just for sake of time. And this one, unhappy path here to here. This one is invalid email okay. Okay. and then this is the unhappy path for here notice it will automatically went to default because true is already used and then this one is Now this is a very simple flow, but the concept is you would get your user story or you would get your feature or whatever your high level requirement is from somebody. And then you would start building out your test cases. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna save. Let's go. Okay. Now, whenever you do a save, there's many different types of saves. I'm just gonna save this one to my desktop. But whenever you do the saves, we'll talk about integrating with TDM. Now I've been using Agile Designer for years, but I've really been using it for the back end of TDM, test data management. And there's, I have other videos out there if you're curious of what that is. So from here, what we wanna do is we wanna click on this. This is the path explorer. And to me, this is really the benefit of using Agile Designer because we build out our test cases. Now imagine, we're gonna look at this in a few minutes with a more in depth one. Imagine if you have multiple different 
uh, test cases with a lot of results and a lot of you know errors and things like that I can come in here and I can say I want to um, mouse work okay so I'll said probably a hundred times that this optimization is one of the most powerful tools pieces of this tool and what it does is it tries to intelligently figure out the best paths for you now once your paths are created those are what you would call your test cases. Now, if you remember earlier, I kind of used test cases and user stories generically. Uh, that's because you can select different types up here. And again, we're going to stick with storing the path as test cases just for now. Now, looking at this, there's something I realized that we didn't finish over here. Because whenever you log in and it says false, invalid, well, okay, what does that mean? We've got to do something. So if this is invalid, then it's just going to end. It's not going to allow my user, if I can click this, to come in. Okay. Basically, we didn't finish our path. Okay. This one's going to, so email is invalid. They can't get in. Again, I apologize. My mouth is my mouse is not playing correctly with me. Let me put it right there. Oh well, we'll figure it out in a few minutes. I want this one right here. I was hoping to keep them all on the same path, but that one, this one, kind of wants to jump through there for some reason. But it is what it is. Now, oh, I see. We've got these two backwards. So we need to delete that one and delete this one. And I want to delete this one again just because it's kind of in the way. Right. Let's see if we can take it this way. I want a straight shot, not a round through that one shot. Ugh. But that's fine. Let's see if this straightens it up for us. No, it did not. It made it worse. But this one, whenever we needed to go here for false, so I had it for true. Okay, that's better. If it's true, it's going to go down to end. Okay, now this is not really saying the user can get in the system. This is kind of validating it. So this is validation of, of a good login. Okay. Okay. Now, if we go back to our Path Explorer, which is here, um, there's a couple of ways to get there. Let me talk about these before we do that. So we talked about moving, like this moves the UI to me. It moves these if I need to duplicate them, if I need to convert them, yada, yada, yada. If I go to Manage, though, this is Path Explorer. This is the same as this one. Build Path manually, um, if you click on it, this will allow you to, let me see, well, we'll come back to this one because I was going to build one and show you, but we'll we'll come back. I want to lose focus here. Change subflows, so if we have subflows, we can organize them. Constraints is the one thing I want to talk about. So a constraint is very important, and a constraint pretty much is a rule. So I can't have this if I have this, and I can't have this if I have this. So basically, think of it like if I have a Ferrari. Well, on the Ferrari, I said I want four-wheel drive. Well, it doesn't exist. So that would be a constraint. If you choose a Ferrari, you can't have a four-wheel drive. And we'll sh I'll show you this in a more detailed um, diagram later. So model, that was what I was looking for. So let's go ahead and close that one. But in the meantime, we're going to jump back up here to our Path Explorer. Remember, we said Path Explorer. So you can get to it from there, or let's go ahead and close this. Or I can get back to it from here. Okay. Now, earlier, if you remember, we had this. Now, the one thing we were missing is the finished flow. What happens if I get an error? Okay. The reason we do that is because in the optimization, it's going to figure out the best path for us, depending on what we're trying to achieve. Now, 
you have the edges say if you have just doing a load test and you want to get the outside ones you have problematic ones what I want is basically everything now when I said go it probably happened too fast before I can explain what happened it laid out these paths for us now again in layman's terms our pass is now our test cases so let's recap for a second earlier we've got a very high level user story or a feature that said we need to validate a login but there's more than just validation when it comes to testing based off of that we were able to drag and drop a couple of these little nodes and give them definitions of what they what their role is and the true and false and we're able to build out different flow paths now with saying that if you remember earlier when I said it's important to label these if I give myself some real estate over here I can see their type so this is code action now if I had one and you'll see this again when I get in a more detailed diagram whenever you look at this one if you had infrastructure it would have a different icon if you had a database it'd be a different icon so those are kind of useful as a quick glance you can also do a in-depth search if you're looking for something more specific but in the meantime we're going to slide this over and what we're going to do we're just going to save this okay now notice my test cases are zero notice it's still zero there we go I didn't save all of them I just saved one so now we have all of our test cases laid out to where they are ready to be tested now looking at this page there's a lot of great information so if I click just one of these nodes or one of these paths it does highlight it here but it also gives me a lot of great details and we'll come back to this later um, when we get to more of an advanced model to look at but just on a high level this gives me a lot of great detailed information here and so we can go to details, um, see if there's anything that just stood out that just was really cool. Then I can go to modification history, run, and so we can do our run tests here. Let's see. And again, I apologize about my mouse. I'm going to have to take care of that situation today. Now automation, I'm going to do a video just on automation. Automation alone would be if you were coding with a tool. Um, we'll get we'll get to that when it's time. So let's go down here and look. So here I can save. I can export paths. Okay, so let's just see settings. Now again, if we're gonna talk about my um i'll get to it really fast here shortly is we want to talk about integrating with other products so but if i was doing that i can export my my paths into say rally or tfs my automation scripts my jira okay i can do a cost value basically let's coverage expiring if you click on this it explains what your cost value is for this run okay here are my nodes, eight of eight percent of a hundred. Um, this is not really good for this small. So if you had a large one, you may want to say my cost value for this test case is not. It doesn't meet my requirements, my business requirements. So then I may go back and do the optimization and try less nodes or reverse that, do more nodes. Okay. If I go here, I can download. All right, sorry, we just talked about that one. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. I said it reverse. So this one's export pass. This one would be import runs. Okay. So say if I did a ran a run through um, some test result, based off of this, I can import it and look at the data here. Okay. Now this is a cool button. We're gonna do it in a few seconds. I can export my scripts. Now if you remember earlier, I said that you can do the coding stuff, and you can create automations. And I'm trying to keep that very vague because I do want to do a video on that. But you'd have some data, you'd have some code here. Um, you'd give it a name. Here, if I need a header, there's some built in wrappers. Okay. So this one is a very good one. And hopefully, I can do my video around it. But then we go down. 
and then I can save settings and I can hit export. It's going to tell me there's nothing to export. But let's just try. Now, this is a YAML file. YAML now is YAML. Um, I'm not sure if it will yell at you if you try this. See, script was empty. So we'd have to go back and put some code. And it saves it as a TXT file also. So I'm not sure if you have to go back and modify that. But we'll, we'll play with that when the time comes. So, because if I can do that, the goal would be, right now, the concept is you would build your, you would take your user story, you would bring it into Agile Designer, you would build out your test cases, and then you would add your automation, and then you would export it into your uh, Terrace file, and then you can bring that into BlazeMeter, okay, and then have BlazeMeter physically do the tests, uh, and be able to view the results. Now, the role there, Agile Designer, is building your test cases, okay? Um, I, I'm doing another set of videos that are the opposite of that, where I'm using JMeter to build my test cases and then bringing it into BlazeMeter. Here, though, you wouldn't want JMeter to do that role. You would do that role here. The difference is, to do that, you see how simple it is to build test cases. Any PM or anybody can build these without knowing programming at all. So they can build these test cases. And again, I'll show you another example in a few minutes of very... A very detailed model inside Agile Designer and you can see how complicated it can get quickly but with seeing that it's easy to manage because Agile Designer has that nice little Vizio drag-and-drop flowchart uh, flow process view to it so we'll get to this later let me close this so here's find data and make data now at the beginning of the video I said that I've used this as a back-end we are going to talk about those but to do that, you have to integrate with TDM. I do have some videos out there that shows how to do that. The concept is find data means that I'm doing a huge where clause with TDM and I'm bringing the data back. With make data, I'm using data generation and that's using TDM as an engine as well that goes and generates mock data for me. And this little guy is path statistics. Okay, so this one's a good one. So I can click on this and this will tell me what is the probability or what is the average for taking this path now granted again this is a very simple flow so this one doesn't give you good information but if i wanted to say what is the probability of hitting test case four okay and with test case four it may go off and hit a web service and it may bring back state of tennessee okay so what are the odds of that happening so that's that's a very good way to visualize your flow and what is the probability of this path versus that path now, granted here I'd almost say 50 50 be just because it's a true or false flip a coin type thing and then here I can import um, let me highlight it again for you so here you can import test cases from an XML file so if I have a system that creates test cases that produces them as an XML then I can import it from here all right so again this little window is actually a good little window um, and this is your Explorer path to me, this is where you can do a lot of the legwork. Now, the one thing I didn't do is, you know what? Let's just run this one. Um, okay. Now, here I can change the status. Let's just say we made, let's don't do this one. Let's close this one. Close. I want to do my happy path, which is this one. So case two. Now, you can change these. If I want case two to be case one, you can change that. But let's make this one happy and we're going to say everything passed okay okay and then now what we're doing here is simulating a run now i can go to here here's my run We could do another one just for fun. We'll say this one's up. Okay. So anyway, so I hope this little path explorer was useful because we're going to close it. And we're going to go back to the original screen. All right, so going back to the original screen, which is our landing page, if you will. 
there's a lot of st information here but I think I'm going to turn I think I'm going to move a different direction again if we look here well let's talk about this for a second here's the cost that we talked about in the other play page if I create my sprint board I can do that here let's see open this a little bit bigger now most of the times you're going to move this to like Jira or something like that but here's my sprint board information um, notice I have one that failed I have a couple with the backlog and that's kind of why you do this just to kind of move the rest of the screen out and about um, with seeing that again here's my information I can add other details if I need to I can get back to my path view if I wanted to and I can move some of these around I can move some of these to what we'd call user stories okay um, or create new ones technically I wouldn't move those All right and then let's see let's close that one if I go to TDM repository now I talked about TDM I'm gonna to get to that again in more detail when we talk about connectors but TDM again is test data management I can save my it technically is a database and what I'm saying is I can save this model that I've created to the database and then it's a shared repository others can get to it versus just sharing it to a file now correct Technically, you can save it to a file and they can still get to that as well. Now, Javelin. I love Javelin. It's a it's a workflow type product. So if you've used Windows Workflow, um, it's built to where it can run through Agile Designer, but it's very heavily used as well as TDM. And I have videos out there on that as well. Now, we can validate our paths, which is very simple. Paths. Um, and what that means is if I have one that looks like it's not again this is a very simple model when you looked at a more detailed model which we will shortly you can see where maybe some things are misled so I forgot about this path or earlier when I said this this was true it would fail technically it should have been true as a happy path versus a false path we talked about exporting your um, exporting your automation and then we can do the find and make the find and make again Tell them, see, it's telling me to connect to TDM. We'll talk about that when we do that. And I also have test data. So, with test data, let's go ahead and I kind of left that alone till now, but let's go ahead and generate this and say, yes, generate this for me. And what this does is it generated the result. So, here with login test, I have, I don't know if you can see this. Okay, so this is one path, okay, where it's false, true, true. Uh, path two is true 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 remember it's our happy path pa false oh, I'm sorry test case three <laughs> is false and true let me see here we go so on test case three we're saying if the email is false okay and then the last one is false just all together in login but now technically I'd have to go back and look because I was just kind of playing when I built that but you get the concept of how fast I built it kind of put it together so let's go ahead and close this and if you wanted to you could export this to a CSV if you have a big long one we're gonna try this again with a more detailed model here in a few seconds now the last thing I want to do before we jump into anything major um, again your export this really is based off this image not your data so at least what I can see this does this excel Take it to data. Uh, oops. Oh well. Now while that's doing that, if it does do anything, we got our common symbols. Okay. We have our accelerators, try entry, radio button, checkbox. I'm not sure why they're all diamonds. Uh, but these that's a UI. So we could use password there other shapes okay more process you kind of get it I'm just kind of clicking around I'm assuming you would do the same and then I'll scroll down to get some real estate here okay importers now I'm gonna get to these well you know I was just talking about over here so I can import inf information obviously I can import from Vizio Remember, so it looks like Vizio. Selenium is a big one, and I've been trying to import from it. Um, I'll have to do a video separate on that, but I would like to do a video completely separate on doing test automations. But let's say I did a recording in Sel Sel Selenium, if I can say that right, then I can import it here. 
that would create my test cases for me. I can the benefit to that would be an easily place to modify them. Okay, um, and then I'll give you an example. Whenever I did test cases the other day with JMeter, uh, let me show you what that looked like on. Um, so if I open one of these up, even a simple one, and we'll just open up a JMX. Well, the JMX is it's really detailed XML. Let's try to open up uh, this one, the Selenium one. It's not, it's their specific format, and you can look at it. It's really just like an XML JSON format where this would be one node, and this would be the array of the node. The big thing here is if you look, there's a login, and then there's and don't worry, all this information is bogus, so you can't steal it. Uh, this was a test user. The the difference is is when it goes down in here, there's a couple things that should be removed uh, to make this a clean, valid test. Well, in order to do that, you have to open that up in some kind of tool to do that in, and that usually takes a developer or somebody with that experience of that tool to do that. Here, it would just be modifying this model that you see. Okay, At least that would be the goal. And then once you do that, then you can export it into another, you know, another YAML export and then you can bring that into blaze meter and do your testing there okay so these are um, these are TDM it's telling me to connect to TDM we'll do that in a minute this is an existing blocks if you built them elsewhere you can you know if somebody builds one you'll import it in and we'll do that in a few minutes anyway uh, well we'll import the whole model this is just blocks in general so if you create a custom one of these uh, rich text box that's like your CSV files um, I open up another window but if you did like um, like some form of, well, I can't drag it over, but you get it, right? So this is application tester importer. Let's see. I have not played with it very much, but notice it brings in a TST. So what that is, is so Broadcom, or CA, it still says CA, so has a product called um, this is containing selenium, but notice the only input I have is a TXT. Now I know the TXT export from the Broadcom tool uh, called. Um, oh my gosh, what is it? It's a. Uh, it builds your test cases. Uh, not it doesn't build it like this, but it does your testing. Um, it's not server synchronization. It's a. Uh, I'll have to think of it, but I'll come back to it. But anyway, it, there is an application that they do that produces a test case that actually builds and runs it for you. Uh, I thought maybe it would say it in here. Oh, dev test. That's the name of it. It didn't show it in there, but it was going through my head. So a TST is a dev test uh, extension, so I'm sure others have it. But there, it's what I was thinking of whenever I looked at that. So a SOAP UI test, if you ever use SOAP UI, you know what that is. Generate test cases, another CSV import. Um, so you kind of get just these are just ways to import information into the system, okay? And this would be um, another product that Broadcom CA has called uh, Service Virtualization. That's bringing in response, um, you know, request and response files. So connectors. Now we're going to definitely I'm going to do a couple of these in a few seconds. Agile requirements. Um, if you connect to the hub. TDM, we talked about that. Rally. Now I don't have any HP products installed, but you know ALM is a very common one. Application lifecycle management. Jira, which you know I've used all these before many times. TFS. The Javelin, like I said earlier, you can build the Javelin flows and bring those in. Um, critical logic, automation, and turnkey. So automation is really. Let me see if I can open it up. It's not opening up for me. So, oh, there it goes. Okay. Oh, I see. The, the window came undocked. But that would be if you're bringing in um, automation scripts. Okay. And again, I hope to do a video on that. And uh, we'll talk about that when I do it. So. I thought maybe it would name another one, but it doesn't. So I was looking for any form of YAML. 
anyway, so let's now change gears. I'm going to bring in a more complex model for you to look at. Hopefully you got an idea of the UI. After we do the model of the other one, we're going to come back and talk about some of these connectors. Now, if you really followed along, basically we started with some form of fashion of, I'd call it a task, or if it's a user story, or if it's a physical task, it depends on the model that you're using, right? Now, if you're using something like TFS, then, you know, it could be a user story, it could be a feature, it could be a task, um, it could be a number of things. It just depends on the process that you're using to create your ALM process. Now, concept is we got a simple task over that said we need to test a validation of an email. Okay, well, that was, what, five, six words? User signs in, user signs up, okay? Um, well, with saying that, there's a lot more to testing than there. So we took that very simple task and we built out a really nice test case for it. Okay. And again, I know this is a high level, but it took just a couple of seconds to build. We also looked at it, we ran it through, we looked at all the values, that, I mean, all the possible paths or all the different test cases that came out of this. Because technically this is the model. So you're looking at the model. Based off the model, we were able to generate, well, let's see, all possible. So we're able to generate four test cases out of this one model, and we didn't really do much for it. Uh, the system did it for us, so it's pretty powerful. All right, so I'm going to end this one here, and I'll probably just tie the other one to it, and then we're going to talk about bringing in a more detailed one. Okay, so now what we're going to do, um, there's two more things I want to do before I end this video. So I want to show you how these connectors work, but I also want to open a more intense, uh, or a, a more detailed model, I guess. Let's see, I had one right here. Let's try. Yeah, this one works. All right, so this is a more detailed model. And as you can see, it actually has a lot, let's see if we can zoom in a little bit, a better flow. Okay. So now this one I believe is connected to TDM and we're not, so it won't actually run, but let's see what this says. Process data, properties. Okay. Oh, maybe not. Maybe it's just made to where you could do it because here's generate. I would assume generate would like connect to TDM and maybe it's, this is just a shell to where you would want to do that. But if I was going to do that, again, it would be either make system data or find system data. Um, usually it's make. And then, I, again, I have other videos that show you how to do that. So I want, don't want to waste time on this one to show you how that's connected, just because those videos are already out there. But let's see. Let's just go ahead and take this one and look at this cases. So I want all possible paths. Now there's just 25 of those. Now this is where I said that where you would actually could use the optimizer to get the test cases that you needed. So notice we went with 25 to 9. Okay, it's very smart also to know if there's any kind of loops or anything like that. The looping you can look at here, and you can set your loop settings where if you want it to be, um, I don't think there's loops in here. But how many loops you want? Do you want everything to loop just once, right? Just for a test case, or maybe I want something to loop more. Um, but anyway, so the optimizer you could play with to get the end result that you're looking for. I always just like to do all possible paths when I'm learning the, the flow that I'm looking at, because then it shows me everything is there, right? Now, again, if you remember, I said earlier, you could also view the different icons. And it's not just so much the icon, it's just the fact that it helps you see, like those are all infrastructure Let's see, they may all be infrastructure. Yeah, maybe they are. What I'm looking at is the type over here. Oh, I would expect this one to be red, but I guess the underlying one it says no type. So maybe that wasn't set, but you get what I'm getting at. So there's another one I'd like to look at too. Oh, and as you see, there's 25 test cases too. Okay. There's another one that I really like. I don't know if I can get to it. Let's see if I can uh, without making a mess. Let's see, program files. 
I'm looking for I'm looking for the root. So if you install this, it actually comes with a nice set of examples. Maybe that's what I was looking for. Um, just be careful. Some of them are not. I found out this. You know, if you've got to set up certain things for some of them to show up. Like SV, obviously you'd have to have service virtualization. Here's subflows. We talked about subflows. So if I looked at a claim processing payment, I can see this one has a subflow. Okay, um, right here. And I should be able to get into it. Again, I apologize, it's just my mouse is not playing with me very well. Uh, so I can go to the subflow. Let's open up a new tab. So believe it or not, this is what's inside that subflow. There's actually a subflow in a subflow. So you can go as deep as you want with that, as you can tell. And I can just look at my test. Let's look at that. I can just look at my test cases just for the subflow if I wanted to. So I'm going to look at all possible paths. And if you notice, some of these go down into the subflow, which is what you'd want. Okay. And if I save all these. Now I've got 40 test cases, and they all consider inside these flows as well. Okay, so that's a good example of the subflow. Um, let's look. There's another one that I like. Uh, I think it's iPad or something like that, but it's pretty detailed. So let's. Oh, iPhone. That's it. Okay. Again, here's another really nice flow here. Um, so hopefully these will give you examples of what you could do with this. Now, remember the birth of this would be just um, a task or a user story. So I may say, hey, we need to test a, an iPhone, right? I don't know what the scope of this is. You can zoom in, but there's a lot of, like, here's the text. There's a lot of great uh, examples that you could look at to get an understanding of a, how to model out what you're trying to achieve, okay? Now, what I want to do now is kind of just really change things up a little bit. Um, I don't want to save any of these. Even though I had to, to I don't even want to save ours. Okay. Uh, well, you know what? Let's leave it for now, and maybe we'll come back to it. Whatever. Whoops. Too late. It's easy to build again. So what I want to do right now is look at actually. Um, let's see. I'm gonna log out of some of these because we're gonna start fresh. And then what we're gonna do is go back into them. So we're gonna change the ball game, and we're gonna go look at rally for a second okay and I'm gonna log in as my good buddy Daniel Dunn because he has better permissions than I do and I'm gonna make sure I go down I have a workspace called Tim test I don't think I have anything in Tim test but what we're gonna do we're going to go in a user story and what I want to do is click right here and we're gonna call I know this isn't a user story. Uh, you know what? We, let's make it useful. User should be able to log in. Okay. So that is fish, officially a user story because oh, that is on owner. We want it to be in our project. Do I have any other projects? I do. So we will go to. To a simple project. Let's leave it there. That way it lets me know that it's just bogus. And I guess that's it for now. I don't need to fill anything else out. So we'll go ahead and set create. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is if you go into Agile Designer, click on connectors, I put in the path to my rally. And again, I'm logging in as Daniel. And we're going to go ahead and launch. Now when you first do this, this is actually docked over here. Oh, there you go. Oop, I had it. Let's dock it back over there. There we go. Cute. Now, I don't know, because I already connected, what we want to do is go change our script. Okay. So if I hit that settings, it brings this one up. And this is the settings for pretty much all your connectors. But what we want to do is change, because we want to go down to Tim Test. And inside Tim Test, we have our sample project. And in there we have a user story. And we need, what you have to do is set up these properties of the user story. So what that means is my name will make it the name, okay? 
And then the schedule state, I'm not really sure what I want to do with that. So maybe I'll just put it in the description because um, I don't really care. And then at least I don't think I care. And then same with the flow. I'll just put it in block description as well. The only one I really care about is the name. Now I can go through and assign all these. What you're doing is you're assigning those, you're mapping those to the attributes. Okay, um, maybe I shouldn't make both these the same. Let's change one of them. Uh, we'll make it the extended output. Okay, and then I want a, we'll say it's always in progress. That's a default value. And then the rest of these I can go through here and set if I wanted to, like if I wanted to assign notes, um, data notes. So you could set what you want. If you don't set it, it's not, it shouldn't show up. These though are required. That's why they were red. So we're going to save and close this. Okay. And what that does is it actually saves it to a physical config file. Okay. Then you can change. I was looking to see where my other one was. Um, then you can change that config file. Oh, hey, you remember the export of that data we did to Excel? It finally finished. Um, hey, check that out. <laughs> so it. Did. It saved it to a, a CSV file, and it didn't save my data. It saved my flow, but it also saved um, the block information, which is pretty cool. I'm not sure why you'd use it, but it's still cool. All right, so now we have Rally. So what I can do, let's go ahead and create a new, and we'll, we'll just call this one Rally Connector, or Rally Demo. Okay, let's go ahead and finish. Now we didn't talk about parameters, but they're pretty common sense. Okay, so what I want to do here is let me see which one is it portfolio items i'm only looking at tim test and what i want is user stories okay and we're going to drag this one in there so now we've attached to our user story to our block okay now this is linked to our rally. Okay, the user should be able to log in. Our properties, infrastructure. Our application link is it is physically linked back to rally. Okay. And of course, people in roles, no big deal. But this is the main thing I want to show you. So you can bring other things over, which is kind of cool. So if I had a set of test cases, and I clicked on view, it's going to take me right to it. Okay. Now, if the, the trick to that is if I had a set of test cases or if I had even the user story, right? So we can bring, so now let's say, let's break this link. Now I want to come up here. The user should be able to log in. Okay. Again, we could say, valid login yeah i mean you could go through that whole process we did earlier with valid email yada 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 we're not going to do that uh valid login okay i'm just going to take defaults we're all good finish okay from here to here we're building our happy path user was able to log in okay now very simple very simple process now we're going to go up here we're going to say, show me all paths. I should only have the one. That's true. We'll go ahead and save it. I should have created a test case. Did we not get the test case? Let's save it again. Okay, now we got the test case. It's right here. And it gives us all the information we need. And if we go back to external links, I'm really surprised we didn't see it there. <laughs> Sorry about that, but I assumed you would have seen Rally show up there, but it's not. That's okay. It is what it is. But what we did was we imported data from Rally that we just set up really quick, right? And we just imported that in. So you could bring over other things and just build them out into an actual test case. Okay. Let's see. There's something I need to check in here. Run. Um, I don't want everything to skip. I want to say everything's going to pass. Oops, I didn't change it, did I? Okay. 
one set of one. Now, if you looked at, let me see, where's that? There was a reason I did that. And it's because, is it this one? So now we can export our test case back to route. Okay, so we'll put it down here into here. And I don't know if this will fail just because I'm kind of just running it quickly, right? Um, but let's just try that. Oh yeah, see there's more to it that you gotta do. So what you would have to do at that point, apologize for the external call, let me do this. Okay, but what you'd have to do at that point is set up your test cases like we did where they're mapped and then I can push it back okay well, I can push it back to user story but that would be ugly let's just see what happens yeah no so but you get the concept right so what we could do is go to rally set up our data or technically we wouldn't do that our PM would do it or anybody could do it and then as test users or even developers we could come into rally our Agile Central and set up a really nice test case and then push it back to Rally once we've mapped. Do you remember the mapping we did a few minutes ago where I said this equals that and that equals that? If you set that up, you'd be able to map that back, okay? In theory, right? Um, but that's how that works. So let's do the same thing, but we're gonna do a different program. And the, the cool thing is I didn't, I didn't really set this up, uh, so we're kind of doing this on the fly. I guess you figured out we're going to TFS. Okay. Now, um, I'm not sure. So I have this bike shop. We used this bike shop as a demo in the past. So in bike shop, I'll go in here. And I'm not sure what I have. Let's just go to queries. Alternate. The only thing assigned to me. I want type, but let me see. Type equals. Oh, it's not type. I'm sorry. Um, maybe this type. Maybe it's just type, not application type. We we've created some custom fields in this as well. TYPE if I can spell type. Yeah, let's just run it real quick and we'll see what it's called. <laughs> How's that? Uh, oh, work item type. That's what I'm looking for. So work on type. There we go. And I want it to be a user story. Either features or epics. Epics, same thing as user story. And then let's run this. So I have none. Okay. So I'm gonna go build. Um, let's see work item, work item, epic, user. Okay, from here, don't care about anything. Priority, don't care. Um, very, very basic, right? We don't really care. Let's go ahead and put a description just for fun. Uh, the user should be able to log in into the system application. All right, and we'll save. All right, so those are epic. Now let's do the same thing we did before. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna say new. This one's TFS. Okay, just finish. And again, you can put these some of these in parameters. I'm just kind of not doing that right now. TFS, I'm gonna do what I did before. I'm gonna log out. This is my TFS. I do have a token. Now with TFS, if you don't know how to connect with directly, um, you could do a login. I may have to create a new token anyway. Okay, now it worked. So if I go look at the token, the way you do that is in TFS, if I go here and here, security is what I'm looking for. Um, I may have to go up a higher level. One second. Oh, there it is, security. And then, oh, I'm lying. I completely apologize. It's actually over here. So this security, not that security. 
and here's my token. So if I wanted to add a token, I'd just say add, give the description, how long you want it to last, one year. Um, just say delete, or not used is fine. And I could set it up to where um, anybody, like I can set up the actual uh, roles if I wanted to, but I don't really care. We'll say all, and now, then you just copy that over. Problem is once you use it, it's gone. So, or it's not gone, but like you can't get back to it. So like there's no way for me to get back to this. Okay. So once you copy to a notepad, save it, do whatever you need to, but just keep in mind once it's, once you leave this page, you can't get back to the token because this is a proper way of doing it. Okay, so now we're over here and we're back into Agile Designer. I should be able to see my user story if I did it correctly. Oh, I'm sorry, I gotta map it. So if I go back to here, I have one user, it's an epic, but you get it, same thing, right? Now over here, there's gotta be, let's see, I'm looking for a name maybe. Priority release tags. ID assigned to activated by date. Give me one second. Give me file name change by created by. Oh, here's description. So we'll, we'll take that. Okay, I'm taking this as my output. And again, when you set this up, you're going to want to be more intelligent about it. Okay, I'm just kind of using this as an example. And if you notice, as soon as I start linking it, it shows up over here that I can use it. Just because these are zeros don't mean they're not there. It means that you didn't link those um, to your attributes inside Agile Designer. Okay. Node name, I'm not sure that's it. We can try it and see. Um, that wouldn't make sense to me though. I was looking for maybe title. Tags, target, oh, title. That's what I'm looking for, okay. So we'll put that in name, and we'll take this one out. And I don't need it. All right, so now we're gonna save and close. And like I said, that creates a config file. The good and the bad is you can share that config file with others. Um, now, I thought there was a way to get to the config file, but there's not. So, well, I'm sure there is, but whenever you go to set it up, oh, it's right here. I'll show you that in a few seconds. But now let's go into work because it's a work item. We got a user story. We should be able to see our user story. And we still don't. Oh, it's an epic. I'm sorry. There it is. Okay. I'm not sure why it says user stories and epics. Usually it's the same thing. All right. So now we got it. We got it there. We close. We can do the same things we did before. Um, let's get it to here, we'll just take a true false, uh, able to log in, okay. We'll delete this one, we'll bring this over to there, this one over there, and yep, happy path only. We'll save. I know it's not pretty, but who cares? We'll go up to here. We we don't have to save because we're gonna trash this. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is say, show me all paths. Again, I should only have one. Okay. We'll take it. We will exit, save it all. And now we have our one test case. So you, you kind of get what I'm getting at, right? So if you link, if you create your user stories or your tasks, epics, whatever they may be in another product, you can easily bring that over as your starting point. It doesn't have to be a starting point. Then once you get that point, I'm not sure I can save this back just because we didn't do the whole mapping thing. Um, but here we go, export path. We wanna go to TFS. Again, if you don't know what these are, so application test, I believe that's dev test. Um, it might have changed its name, which is a great product. I love that product. Uh, service virtualization, which is SV. Um, export to test cases to XML. It just creates an XML file. We can look at that in a few seconds. Uh, rally, we can go back to Rally. Um, HP, right? These two are HP. And uh, well, uh, HP LM, 
and then HPM test services by ALM. Jira, which I don't have Jira installed, but you guys get that right. It's project management, so it's very easy. Uh, team foundation and automation. Now, I thought there was a plugin also for um, Microsoft's version, uh, Microsoft Project, but I don't see it. I think you can export it, maybe as XML or something, and then import it into here. Um, but let's go ahead and go back to uh, TFS. And here, that's fine. Export. And then what I would do there is I would want to export that into my test cases, not into my Epic or my user story. Okay, again, it's not going to work because we have to go set up. We have to go set up the mapping, but that's it. It's really that simple. Um, it'd probably yell at me if I try to export it back to here. Yep. But anyway, you get the concept. Um, maybe later on I'll set those up just so you can see what it looks like. So the goal to that would be your PM or manager, whoever would go into these products, Rally, TFS, Jira. They would set up their use cases, their stories, um, whatever they need. And then you as the end user, again, could come into Agile Designer, easily import them over, and then start working on them. Or if they're even test cases, say if I want to bring test cases over, bring them over. And then I have a visual diagram, a visual layout that I can use to build those scripts. And then go, well not even scripts, but we call this the model, right? So build a model, and then take it and into the test cases, and then I can modify the test cases directly. Um, what I want to show you is if I go back to item, I should have my link here, back to TFS, and we do. Okay. Um, if I click on it, it should take me right to it. So anyway, so I hope some of this was useful. Um, what we covered was kind of a, kind of scattered in a way, but that's just the way my mind works. Uh, but we started with the concept of the basics of just building a simple um, model, if you will, based off the one sentence requirement. The model then what we're able to do is then go build the test cases. Okay, in the test cases we were able to modify, see the details, we're able to run some tests. Um, now they weren't physical tests against the machine. You'd want to take that into another tool. And you can do that too here if you set that up correctly. Um, I've just never done that. Usually you build your test cases and you export them to another tool. Um, oh, the last thing, I'm sorry, I did skip one. The other connector I want to show you was TDM. So I do have TDM installed um, on a remote server. And if I, now this is local on my machine. But if I click here, this popped up on another screen. So let me drag it over. Okay, that is okay. And now I'm connected to uh, TDM. That is one of my favorite products by um, by Broadcom slash CA. And with it, there's a lot of stuff you can do with that. Like I can, like here I can say, if I need to create users, then I can use TDM to generate those users for me into my test scripts. Um, so anyway, hopefully this was useful. Let's just make sure we didn't forget anything. This is what we just looked at, your config. Remember I said you can do the config file. So if I say save as, um, let's say, demo just so we know demo now i'll open it so you can see what it looks like but these config files is pretty much what drives um let me open it up with notepad so we don't get pretty nasty sorry about that it's on another screen so just bear with me i'll do notepad plus plus that's fine um, so looking at this this is your script file you'd want to set up your settings Notice that these are like case invalids, case invalid statuses, backlog. You'd want this carries your con I think it carries your connection, I'm not sure, but it definitely carries your mapping. And that's what you need to make these things work back and forth. Okay. Um, and again you can create one of these and share it with other people. Um, let's see, there's a lot of good stuff here default paths you know, like you can modify these if you wanted to so you know for sure you didn't have user stories you had epics instead I can rename this um, connection options these are the connections we were talking about you can set it to always connect um, what is your default path again I could change this if I wanted to these are the only two I've used so that's only two is there same with Jira and TFS now I don't have Jira installed but that's how you connect to it TFS for sure and then uh, I don't have any HP products installed you can set up your sprint boards. Remember I showed you a sprint board in another part of this video where you could see it in each area. 
So you can set that up here if you wanted to, to map whatever your business case is. Um, and then your spit boards would pretty much map uh, TFS. That's where you'd set that up. Rally, you saw those two. Stored paths, um, block, custom fields, and version. Remember I said earlier, you may have something custom where you can build that. Uh, and you can also do versions. So if we have release and different versions and stuff like that. Um, the other thing is automation. I want to do a video on automation. Automation is a little bit deeper, and I, I kind of ignored that over here on purpose because the way automation works, if you ever use any of the automation tools, you have your, your types that you can connect to, and then you have your, your script that you put in there. The default is always there. You would delete this and add whatever you want. So if you want to add an object, uh, call it you know header XML. And then with that, I can say add the action. Um, Header. There's no action really. It's just going to put the data there. Um, so we can insert. Well, probably insert a variable is the way I would do it. And then over here, I would just put. Uh, this will not work. I'm just doing like a pseudo thing. In fact, this probably would even yell at me if I wanted to use it. So. Okay. And then again, I can insert attributes, uh, variables results if I wanted to so it's very very useful whenever you get to this level now this is very advanced so I like I said I will do another video on just how to do automation um, exports how you export your stuff unfortunately I did find out that uh, YAML the YAML which is the newer version uh, TARS importing and using those scripts as well as jmeter scripts they're not supported as of now but i'm thinking that what you could do is build it raw and export it that i know you can do the downside is i can't import right so uh, again you'd have layers the layers are pretty cool so you have different languages that you could pick um, that you're going to use in you know in your code or if it's json or c plus plus or sql uh, but anyway, so I hope you kind of get with the concept of that. Uh, and last thing is your settings. Pretty common sense, just default setting stuff. Um, if you just go through here and kind of look through it, most times you're not going to touch any of this stuff. Okay. Anyway, so I hope these videos were... This may be one long video, so but it took me a couple tries to get it going because I had to walk away and stuff. Um, but with saying that, hopefully uh, most of this will make sense. And watching these videos kind of at least get you started with ARD. I recommend if you like it, do some research, go play with it. Um, it's very simple to get started, as you saw. You can just go in there and you know drag and drop things, run them, test them. As you saw from the login, it's pretty straightforward. So the login uh, model that we created. Remember, you want to call this a model. Once it becomes a model, the reason it's not a test case yet, because you haven't created the test case, the model creates a path. Once you've modified and saved the path and done things, you know, you can edit the path, whatever you need to do. Then once you save it, then it becomes a test case. Okay, and each path is its individual test case. Um, and then the test cases, you can do whatever you need to with them. Export them, move them, modify them. Um, anyway, but again, the concept of this is it's easy to, it's easier for anybody. You don't have to be a programmer to know how to do these blocks, right? All right, I hope this was helpful. And... Uh, Reach out to me if you have any questions. Thank you.